by a comedian. Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, my show is kind of humorous, but I'm not a, I'm not a professional comedian. <laughs> well, I heard that you are. <laughs> well, uh, I guess Joe really likes the show then because he, I have a co-host and he and I kind of, we work, we work pretty good together when it comes to doing the radio show. We, we have a good craft together. Wait, wait, what, is, what channel is it on? Is it on the air right now or no? Nah, well, our show's not on the air right now. We're doing a pre-record, but it's uh, Friday nights from, uh, from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, uh, Mountain Time. Mountain Time? Yeah. As opposed to what? Pavement Time? I understand. <laughs> well, like, okay, like, you're you're in California. You're Pacific Time, okay? Right. And I'm in South Dakota, so I'm Mountain Time. Oh, Eastern time. Well, I'm I'm, I'm Mountain time, not Eastern. I'm on our. Out there too, honey. <laughs> I'm a, when, can I, when can I look? Can I, can I tell my friends to listen to the show? Um, could we hear? Um, I guess I'm asking if uh, my friends could hear the show out here. On is it Friday night on, on a channel out here on the radio? Yeah, yeah, you can listen on Friday nights. Uh, it's a uh, uh, on, on a website called ktq. dot org. I can always probably send you the link or tell or send it to Joe and he can send it to you. Ktq. Q. dot org. dot org. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Close enough. <laughs> Well, he's been hooking me up, so he hooked me up with you, and uh, it's it's, a, it's an honor to talk to you. I, I looked at your website and got to know you a little bit, got to know some of your work, and I am kind of familiar with some of the stuff that you've done. So that makes. Are you still called? I'm surprised. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I've been doing this interview thing for quite a long time, and I you know I'm I'm nobody special, but I just uh, I I just get a kick you know out of uh, uh, being able to hang out with you know people that in the inter- entertainment business. I think it's cool, you know. Well, we're all nuts. That's for sure. <laughs> Make no mistake about it, or we wouldn't be in this craft. You know, we're all insecure, and that's why we all got into the business initially. Like my my old acting coach used to say, Roy London, God rest his soul. He used to say he was the premier ca- um, uh, acting coach in Los Angeles. He used to say, I don't want anybody in here in my class who hasn't had their heart broken and who isn't completely effed up. Uh huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's right. Oh, there yeah. you go. Well, then maybe I'd fit in there because you know I've had my heart broken a few times. I've never been yeah. effed up, but. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had our hearts broken. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was the theme. That was the theme, in my estimation, in uh, um, uh, the Wizard of Oz. Hearts will never be practical until the day they are made unbreakable. Uh huh. Well, that's that's a good saying. That's pretty pretty cool. That, that, that to me was the thematic echo of the movie. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. We're not, we're not here to talk about Judy Garland. <laughs> no, we're, we're here to talk about you. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> this is, your, this is your, your time to shine. But it, but it seems like in, in your career you've shined a lot in your career as far as uh, being an actress. And, and what, guy, what kind of got you uh, interested in act, uh, being an actress in the first place? Well, um, I was very insecure and I wanted people to like me. <laughs> and um, my daddy was in Canada all the time because um, my mom stole all his money. So um, I grew up uh, pretty much with my mom, and my dad came down periodically, who I love uh, with all my heart and miss uh, more than anything in the world. But um, I, I guess, pardon me, I guess because I just wanted, uh, I wanted attention and I wanted people to like me. And, of course, I loved acting, um, and, you know, all I needed was an audience. Um, and people used to say, you're so funny, you're so in- out of your mind, off the charts, you're nuts, you're insane, you should go into acting. So I opted to do that uh, a long time ago, before your parents were born. Oh, wow. <laughs> How old are you? How old are you, by the way? Well, I, I turned 30 last September, so I was born in 1983. Oh, happy, happy birthday, belated birthday to you. So, are you, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me, um, Sagittarius? Uh, I think I'm a Leo, as far as I know. 
Oh, that's a bad sign. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> great. <laughs> I'm kidding. Leo is a great sign. Leos are leaders. Well, I, I try to be. Leo's leaders. 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 You know, because that's around the September time or whatever. Oh, I always read the horoscopes because I've been a whore all my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I did snort when I laughed. Oh boy, that's a <laughs> that's that's funny. I didn't know you were a comedian. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just try to make I just try to make people laugh. I don't know. I'm just I'm just crazy as a loon. I don't know what to tell you. Did you tell you I'm kind of out there? She, well, he told he, he told me you had the gift of gab, and he's definitely uh, he definitely wasn't lying about that. <laughs> oh yeah, you'll never hold on to After you hang off, I'll still be talking till midnight. Trust me. <laughs> to nobody in particular. Yeah. Dead phone, but I'll still be yakking. Oh jeez. But uh, it, it's just kind of kind of neat to, to to know that you you did a a few movies that I've heard of. I've heard of Manic Cop one and two, and I've seen I've seen Airplane two because I watched the first one, and of course I was always interested in the sequels. So yeah, I mean that, that's, that's kind of neat to know that you were a part of that franchise. Yeah, I was um, I was in the second one, and I think the first one was much better. But um, the second one, I had an opportunity to meet a lot of great. Uh, comedians and actors, and I kept in touch with a couple of them, Sonny Bono in particular. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, those were the days. Those were the good old days, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, back when, uh, back when making a movie was, uh, was was actually work. I mean, it's still work, but it's like nowadays people think people want special effects. You know, in yeah, their I movies. hate special effects. Don't get me going on special <laughs> effects. CGI, I hate it. I cannot stand special effects. I will not go see any franchise like uh, Spider Man or um, you know, Avengers, any of that, because I cannot stand special effects. It ruins it. It's like what for me. It's like watching a cartoon. Yeah. And I love I love indie films. Always, I always uh, go to indie films because you know it's just real people interacting with real people and real stories and sure. and you know all the all the cgi visual effects stuff's not in there and i know kids love the special effects and all of that but i i just can't stand it lord of the rings and all, all of that stuff i just refuse to watch it and i'm not denigrating or castigating um those movies <laughs> of course i am but i <laughs> i just i just i don't like them well, it seems like that's kind of the the trend now. It seems like it's not. It seems like it's never going to go away. I don't know why. It's just never going to go away. It seems like. Well, I think you're absolutely right. And and what makes it even worse is the 3D glasses, which <laughs> they charge you more for. I think they charge what ten dollars or five dollars more for the 3D glasses. Yeah. So by the time you get out of there, paying for the popcorn, the parking, and the movie, it's like what four hundred dollars now or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, and that's not even the Canadian rate. That's the American rate. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> You have a great laugh, by the way. Oh well, thank you, thank you. Wonderful I've, laugh. I've been told that. I've been told I laugh like uh, like uh, Pee Wee Herman sometimes, or or uh, Mr. Bean, or whoever, or or even Ernest P. Whirl or Jim Varney. <laughs> yeah, you have a wonderful laugh. Oh, That's great. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I, I you know, and, but I I do agree with you when it comes to the whole film thing because you know I always like a movie with a good story. I've always been good at you know I, I like a good comedy. You know, comedies are always great. Oh yeah, love comedies. Yeah, and, and uh, also like uh, documentaries, like 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 musical documentaries. Like there's a movie that I'm sure you remember, uh, Eddie and the Cruisers. You know, Eddie and the Cruisers too. You ever see that? No, I n- I never saw it. Oh, you never seen that? Oh, you no. should. You should. It, it was around your time frame from when you were doing these movies uh, back in the eighties. I just did a big documentary on Canon Films, believe it or not. Oh wow! It's, uh, it's a backstage look at the wild, wacky uh, history uh, behind Canon Films because I starred in the epic disaster America Three Thousand. Um, <laughs> And when they asked me to describe Canon in a word, I, I said uh, something like avaricious, 
parsimony of hemorrhoids. That's how these guys were, the uh, uh, Menachem Golan and Yoram Globus, who are called, not me, in the industry, okay, not me. This is what I was told by many people, that they're, they're called the go-go boys, the peasants, or the bad news Jews. That's what they're called. I don't call them that. This is what they are referred to in, uh, in Hollywood. Oh, okay. So, yeah, Hollywood lingo, more or less. <laughs> what's that? H- Hollywood lingo. You know, it's like like Hollywood's yeah. way of talking. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I just did this documentary that I'm really excited about. Oh, um, that's cool. For, um, for um, um, Canon, uh, Canon Films, and the director is Mark Hartley, who did the remake of Patrick. I don't know if you ever saw Patrick. Uh, it was an Australian film, I think I think from 1978, but this amazing director, um uh, who just came, flew over from Australia to interview me for the uh, Canon Films Behind the Scenes documentary that's going to come out later this year. Uh, unfortunately, um, the uh, Go-Go Boys, the uh, Menachem and Golan Cousins, uh, have decided they're doing their own documentary. So what, they, what they're what they doing is uh, they finished their documentary already, after Mark Hartley already met with them a year, year and a half ago, and, and they gave him the green light to do it, and he got all, all the rights from, um, I think it was MGM or wherever he had to get the rights from, so they decided that they wanted to do their own doc, uh, and they're rushing it to the Cannes Film Festival. I don't know what it's called, but uh, uh, it's pretty upsetting, I'm sure, to uh, the people that are doing this. It's called Electric Boogaloo is what it's called. <laughs> yeah, it, Electric Boogaloo, and, and I guarantee you, it, it is shocking. Um, you know, uh, there's 96 actors at least in this documentary from Bo Derek to Robert Forrester um, to almost everybody who's ever worked on a canon film. And I don't think more than one person has said anything positive about about their relate with their relationship uh, with with Canon. You know, they were uh, they called me one day and uh, out of the blue and asked me uh, to come and star in a, in their Canon film called America Three Thousand. And uh, I was in between pimps at the time. I mean, agents. Sorry. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they asked me to come out uh, to Israel and do it. So uh, I went over and and did it. So. Um, the guy that called me, Ronnie Yakov, I think his name was, or Ronnie Jackoff, something like that. <laughs> he called me to come over and do it, and he asked me, how much did you make on your last film? And I told him the truth, and he says, well, I'm paying you half that. And so, you know what? You know something, Sean? I went over because I had the opportunity to travel to the homeland, to a place where I would have never in a million years been able to go to um, by myself. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I... I, at, well, at the time, I, I did have some money, and I could have traveled, I suppose. But, you know, they they, uh, they did fly me over. Uh, I was in stewards, of course, uh, with all the, all the luggage. But they did fly me over there, and I was there for three months. And, and I had a magnificent time with the people over there. Um, the, the nicest people I think I've ever met in my life uh, are in Israel. Israel and, and Australia, by the way. Oh, wow. Well, I suppose I mean it's kind of kind of life changing too. I suppose to to be able to, to experience something like that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure it's kind of life like life changing kind of to to experience you know like another country you know. Oh, oh, uh, you know, I went to Jerusalem, of course, and and you know, I had I had a, a life changing experience when I was there. Um, I. I just can't tell you how incredibly beautiful the country is and how, how lovely the people were. Uh, the, unfortunately, the shekels evaluated every day that I was there, and there were boys, 16, 17 years old, on every street corner uh, carrying rifles, guns, you know, the military army carrying cannons. There were cannons set up all over the place uh, because of the suicide bombings and, you know, because of Palestine and the trouble that they were having there, um, which they're, they're still having, obviously, for thousands and thousands of years. And I doubt that it's ever going to change. But, but like, like you said, to be able to go over, over to uh, a foreign country like that was uh, one of the, the, the absolute great highlights of my life. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I feel the same way, you know, like, a few years ago, I got a chance to actually live out a dream of mine and, and go on a vacation. You've heard of the movie The Goonies before, I'm sure, right? The Goonies, of course. 
course, absolutely. I got to go on uh, a couple times uh, and take the Amtrak train from where I originally lived to uh, Portland, Oregon, and then take a bus from Portland to Astoria. And because that's Astoria is where the Goonies were filmed, where most of it was filmed, not all of it, but uh, I know that. yeah, and uh, it's right on the west coast. It's like the start of the Columbia River. Oh, it was a great experience, and it definitely was life changing for me. That's for sure. How was how was it life changing for you? Well, it, it's just because it, it was a dream of mine for the longest time, and I never thought it ever happen. And then one day, it just kind of clicked in my mind. It's like. I really want to go to see this place. See this place. I've seen it on the internet. I've seen it. I've seen the movies many, many, many times, and uh-huh. I and I just I, I just want to go. And I so I sacrificed and I I saved and I I worked my butt off and and, and made it made it happen. Not once but twice. And uh, uh-huh. I definitely uh, definitely am happy I, I got to accomplish something like that. Because a lot of people like to go, you know, like they like to go to Hawaii or they like to go to, you know, the tropics, you know, for vacation. I wanted to go see where the Goonies were filmed. You know, uh, you know that's how spontaneous I am. <laughs> no, wasn't, wasn't that directed by Spielberg? Yep, yep. Yeah, he keeps calling me all the time. I have to disconnect myself. <laughs> I, I wish he. Give up, yeah. <clears throat> I wish he called me. I'd love to talk to Spielberg. Oh man, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being facetious, of course. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so, what have you been up to lately? Then, what's uh, what's new well, in the life? I just finished a movie uh, with Melanie Griffith called uh, "Day Out of Days." Okay. And I play. Um, it was directed by uh, Zoe Cassavetes. Uh, she's the daughter of John Cassavetes and Gina Rollins, and she was absolutely brilliant. And uh, she was uh, the writer as well. And um, I play this uh, over-the-hill actress who's an alcoholic, pill-popping, psychotic uh, woman who, um, it's, a su- it's a supporting role, it's not a big role, but it's a pivotal role because uh, it's a role that uh, makes the lead actress, Alexia Landau is her name. She plays Mia Clark, she is the star of the movie, and it makes her realize uh, after uh, connecting with me again a couple of times that uh, she never wants to be, uh, never wants to become like me, you know, uh, uh, like I said, an over-the-hill actress who's, uh, uh, you know, lost her way and gone insane, basically gone insane, <laughs> and, you know, still wearing micro mini skirts and overdrawn lips and trying to lure men to their ultimate <clears throat> doom, you know, which was really a real stretch for me, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, because when I first when I first seen you, what what, what what the first thing I thought in my mind, and this is kind of going back to an older an older TV show, I thought you were at first Hot Lips Houlihan from Mash. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, you know, you, you know something nobody's ever made that uh, analogy before ever. Well, that's what I first thought when I first seen you. That's who I thought you were at, at first, and then when I found out who you were, she's like a hundred years old. I, <laughs> I know, but it's like I that's kind of the comparison I'm that I got. Honey. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I I that's the comparison that I got though because when I before I knew who you were and then once I found out who you were, I was like, "Oh, this is somebody different." Okay, but she I thought you were I thought you were Hot Lips Hulahan. You know, that's who I thought. You know. That is so funny. No one, ever, <laughs> no one has ever said that before. Ever. I can't remember her name. Yeah, I don't really. remember her name. <laughs> I, don't remember. I don't remember her name. I could probably look you it up. You remember her lips, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and what those lips could do to you. Oh, jeez. Huh? <laughs> that's, that's how she got the role, I'm sure. Well, <laughs> Kelly Kellerman played it uh, in the feature film, I know that. Yeah. Uh, you me... the feature film? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have. I have. Uh, let's see. Her name is. Let's see. Hot Lips Hulahan. So. Loretta Swit? Is it Loretta Swit? I think you're right. I, yeah, Loretta Swit. Yeah. I'm always right, honey. <laughs> yeah, I should. I should never doubt I'm you. Kidding, I'm kidding. Joking. Oh, that's it's okay. You 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 should. Have, yeah, she's 76 years old, so you're you're definitely younger than her. <laughs> yeah, not by many years, but yeah. No, I'm younger. People ask me my age. Whenever people ask me my age, I just say I'm under a hundred. Next question. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's that, that's that's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's good to. I, I, I look. Everyone says I look like I'm in my thirties and forties, and I have had nothing done. And you now I'm one of the few people in Hollywood who has had nothing done. I'm probably the only actress of my era that still 
has her own face. Oh, sure. She's still alive and has her own face. Both of them, actually. Um, but, you know, um, it's like when you come, when people come to become actors or act- actresses in Hollywood, the first thing uh, they encounter when they get off the plane is, uh, you know, a plastic surgeon, you know, ready to do, do their faces for them. Um, that's just how Hollywood is. Everybody wants to uh, rush to get plastic surgery done, but I, I have... Uh, uh, refuse to do that except for my breasts. You know, I do have plastic explosives. I'm not, not going <laughs> to lie to you. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure the audience would really love to go into detail about that. <laughs> well, I can elaborate if you want. Oh, jeez. I'm a 36D cup. Okay. Well, that's... That's right. I was a 36C plus cup, but when my mom passed away, I was a... Uh, you know, I was extraordinarily depressed, so I thought it would help me to, I thought it would help my self-esteem yeah. to go and get a, a boob job, uh-huh. and and it didn't, it made it worse, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was so stupid. Uh. And after I had done about 20 movies as well. Yeah. So, I don't know, did you ever see all the Marvels? Um, have all I seen? All the Marvels with Peter, Peter Fox. I, you know, I... I with him. Yeah, I have never, I have never seen that, but I, but I'm definitely gonna go check it out because uh, it looks like a good movie. Better, huh? Peter Fox starred in it. Oh yeah, yeah. He played well, my manager. We, I, I went to wrestling school for, uh, gosh, eight or nine months, and there were two thousand girls that auditioned for the role, and they narrowed it down to twelve. And Kathleen Turner was one of them. Um, and she didn't make the cut. I did, and it did screen tests uh, for Robert Aldrich, one of the greatest directors in the history of cinema. Of course, he did The Dirty Dozen, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, The Longest Yard, and what else? I mean, I could go on and on forever. And all the Marvels was his last movie. Um, and I didn't know he had passed away until I was in. Uh, I was in actually in Spain in uh, Almeria. Uh, when I got a call from a friend of mine who told me that he had passed away. I was doing a movie called Hunt Hundra, where I played a female Conan, and, and my friend called me and told me that he passed away, and I was uh, decimated emotionally because, um, you know, he, he was such an unbelievable director. Oh, um, sure. Yeah, that's... Well, that's, uh, that's what's, what's kind of neat about it, you know, like like back in the day, you know, when, when people were making films, they just wanted to make films to tell a story, but now it's all about money. How much money can a movie make? People have forgotten the, the, the whole uh, the whole transcript of what film's supposed to be all about, you know, what, what the guys, what the days of uh, vaudeville was all about, you know, and, every, and everything else, you know. And, very perceptive on your on your part. Very, very, very perceptive and pro and profound, to say the least. Yeah. What you just said. Well, I'm I'm I, I'm an old school guy. I might be thirty years old. I might be a kid, you know, to most people. But I I, I, I live you by a lot like of old school rules. <laughs> well, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> But uh, I was looking at your website, and Joe also told me, too, that uh, you're really big on, uh, you're an advocate for the uh, Circle L Animal Rescue. Thank you so much for bringing that up. I really, really appreciate that you brought that up. Yes, I am a humongous uh, advocate uh, for Circle L Ranch. It's in Prescott, Arizona, Prescott Valley, and uh, it's run by my uh, one of my dearest friends in the world, Jenny Alberti runs it and it's a 40 acre ranch um, uh, rescue sanctuary type of place but they can only keep the the dogs you know it's all, it's all the dogs that the yeah. mostly pit bulls right? rescue pit bulls um, and, and so does she she has I think six or seven dogs that she rescued from the ranch herself and um, you know it's very very close to my heart and it's a, a big passion for me and you know people don't know you know, uh, about uh, puppy mills, the pernicious puppy mills. People should never, ever, ever buy from uh, stores, and thank God they, they've eliminated, eliminated most of the puppy uh, puppy mills. But what they do with the puppy mills, they, uh, they're all, all the dogs, the female dogs, are in crates, little tiny crates when they're pregnant, and the crates are stacked on top of each other, eh? Yeah. And the, the top dog, the female at the top, uh, uh, has the babies and the the drippings, unfortunately, the feces comes down, and most of the puppies underneath and the mothers below die. Um, so I, I uh, strongly beg people not not to uh, get pedigree dogs to please, please rescue. If you go to your, your local animal shelter, there are dogs begging, begging for you to, to take them home, and it's just heartbreaking for me 
that um, people continuously, uh, you know, breed for greed. I wrote a movie called Jailhouse Dog that um, I'm, I'm trying to get made. Uh, I initially wrote it as a uh, uh, drama, and the studios loved it, but they said uh, the, the theme of euthanasia, and, and you know, uh, they wouldn't buy it. So I have turned it into a comedy. And the concept is simple. There's a prison warden named Ramsey Lord, our Lord, uh, yeah. whose wife has run off with the uh, prison chaplain, Lester the Molester. <laughs> anyway, the inmates kill for Ramsey's uh, ex-wife's pedigreed French bulldog, and it's pedigreed for a reason. Um, they do it as a joke, uh, but the convicts fall in love with the indomitable dog, and they won't return her unless Ramsey reciprocates by meeting their demands, and they, what they want is their own canines. So, he, because he's desperate to get Butchie back for his demanding uh, ex-wife, Ramsey enlists all these unwanted strays from a wacky animal lover named Rochelle, uh, which is me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. I, I, anyway, uh, which helps not only save the animals, but more importantly, helps rehabilitate the insouciant, uh, surreptitious inmates by teaching them unconditional love. Yeah. Uh, so instead of, you know, hating and creating mayhem, the pr prisoners ultimately learn compassion and valuable um, vocational skills, you know, they can use after serving their time. So the thematic echo, once again, is uh, don't breed for greed, rescue. Um, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm endeavoring to raise the consciousness of the, to the public about the horrors of puppy mills, basically, and, and to liberate stray dogs from the duplicitous, pounds because they're treated so horribly but uh, once again this is done as a comedy um yeah and to me it, it, it's funny but uh pets are proof that speaking isn't compulsory uh, a lot of things uh, about dogs people don't know is uh you know dogs can find uh, a lost child in the wilderness or missing from their homes they they locate uh, uh skiers that are buried in avalanches you know, they obviously assist law enforcement with crime scenes and so forth and find uh, trapped people in collapsed building, and they can even locate drowning victims. And um, the, 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 I'm just hoping and praying to God that uh, this movie gets made because there's over 80 million people out there with dogs. And yeah. So how's, how's that for audience identification? Yeah, that's, 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 pretty, that's pretty good. No, I, I, I agree with you because it's like, you know, animals are... Are, are smarter than people give them uh, credit for. Everybody thinks that, oh, all, absolutely. everybody's, some people, not everybody's like this, but some people think that, you know, animals are stupid, but they're not. They're, they're, no, they're, they're not stupid. They're, oh, no, they're not stupid. They're, they're, uh, they're, yeah. they're, they're, no. they're, Do you they're, have a dog or a cat? Uh, I, I don't have one at where I live, but, uh, uh -huh. But my my parents have you know a couple a couple dogs and a couple cats and my sister has a pit bull and they're they're okay. friendly as hell you know they're they're great you know they are they're wonderful wonderful incredible dogs and it's not it's not uh, the dog it's the owner and you know because they've basically been trained to attack. Um, uh, they've been raised to attack, yeah. um, but but if they're raised with love, unconditional love, um, you know, they're, they're as, as good or better than any other kind of dog. Um, I, I love I love pit bulls. Uh, I've never had, in my life had a bad experience with a pit bull, and I always always go up to them whenever I'm walking my my dogs, uh, Moses or the Gizzard. <laughs> and, you know, people always uh, say, oh, I'm so scared, oh, pitbulls, pitbulls, and, and I just say, please come up, uh, and, you know, and, you know, the dogs don't attack them or anything, They're, you know, and all the dogs I ever encounter at uh, Jenny's Ranch, Circle L Ranch, um, they're mostly actually pitbulls. They're the most loving and the, the kindest and the sweetest animals uh, you could ever meet in your life. So I'm really happy that you're telling me about uh you know, your sister having a pit bull. What's, what's your pit, pit bull's name? Uh, his name is uh, McGurgan. Uh, McGurgan? Yeah. It's a weird McGurgan. name. name. <laughs> I love that name, McGurgan. I'm going to change my name to McGurgan. Uh, what does it mean? What does it mean? It's actually taken after uh, my sister's boyfriend's uh, nickname. I guess they used to call him McGurgan for some reason because his name was Michael. I don't know where that uh -huh. where I don't know where that comes from, but but I was going to tell you a little story as far as the pit bull goes. Uh, uh -huh. My I have a nephew. My sister has a two almost a two year old, and she's had the pit bull longer than she's had her her son. 
but ever since the son, you know, was born and uh, was brought into the house and everything, the dog has always been friendly to to my nephew. Has never has never attacked him. Has always been actually, if anything, he's overprotective of him. He, if if somebody doesn't know uh, know uh, him that well or whatever. He he may growl a little bit, but he's overprotective of, Be- of of my nephew Bentley. Like he he'll protect him more or less. Well, that's what they're. That's uh, uh, interesting that you say that because uh, that's primarily what they are known for is protecting their owners, and that's why um, people think they're vicious, but they're not. They're protecting their owner. Other dogs will protect their owner as well, but but pit bulls uh, are, are overly protective. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm really happy that you mentioned that. Thank yeah. you for mentioning that. Hey, hey, no problem. I mean, I just figure, you know, you know, I, I, you know it, it's a true story, and I, you know, I've always, I've always been an animal lover, and I always will be. I just, you know, some people can. I, I've met people that have too many animals, and sometimes that's a little crazy to have a small house and then have like 20 animals in your house. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, animals are still great, but I think there should be a limit on how many animals people have. You know. You know what I mean? Yeah, it depends. Like you said, it depends on where you live and how many, you know, the square footage of the house, the size of the backyard, and if the owner is responsible, you're right. Yeah. You know, there's some women um, that have been on the news lately that have uh, 100 cats or 200 <laughs> cats and, yeah. you know, 75 dogs running around loose. And, and, yeah, uh, hoarders. Uh, <laughs> you're right about that. Uh, animal owners should be responsible even when you adopt you should be responsible uh, don't go and adopt don't go rescue just because you want to rescue make, you know please make sure that you are a responsible uh, dog owner or cat owner oh yes uh, well I tell you I, I appreciate uh, this lo- uh, conversation that we've had uh, it's definitely been uh, a good interview that's for sure well, thank you so much. Um, can I plug a show that I'm doing on o- October 24th through 26th? Yeah, I don't go right ahead. Thank you. It's uh, in Dayton, Ohio. It's uh, Epicon. Joe Williamson got this for me. Oh, that's right. Yes, show. yes, yes. That's uh, that's how I've been getting some of these other guests too. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. It's a celebrity autograph show, and um, the great thing about it is it uh, benefits the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. Uh, a long time, thirty. Your friend of mine has uh, pulmonary fibrosis, and I see what it's doing to him, and it, it is absolutely horrific. And, uh, and uh, five dollars um, at the door is going to benefit the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. And I'm also doing Whorehound September 5th through 7th in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, so I'm excited about that. Um, well, we should we should talk real quick about uh, some conventions because I I like to hear. Do you have any cool convention stories at all that you'd like to share before we let you go? Um, you mean the people that that attend them, or or like has anybody ever told you a cool story of how they you know how they grew up watching your movies or they remember you oh, from all the time. <laughs> people come up and now uh, the weird thing is they quote from movies that I don't re- even remember uh, <laughs> saying like in Maniac Cop 1 or 2 they, they'll come up and they'll just out of the blue start quoting um, dialogue or scenes that I that I was in and I, I'll remember the scenes obviously that I was in but I, I don't remember the dialogue I can't even believe it like or in All the Marbles or in I the Cherry I started with Armand Asante people will come up and, and just uh, jokingly quote from either jury or any of these 24 <laughs> movie, movies that I've done and uh, it's almost embarrassing for me um, that I, I don't remember saying the dialogue you know I don't yeah. have dementia not too bad but I, <laughs> I you know I just can't believe um, uh, how much people love uh, the, the genre uh, especially the horror genre uh, that I, I'm associated with, but uh, I've done, you know, the full spectrum, you know, I've, I've played uh, um, detectives, and, and um, you know, in Hundra, I, it was, I played, I played, uh, it was the dawn of women, women's civilization, and I, I, I was a female Conan in that, in Airplane 2, I was a stewardess, and, you know, um, um, the America 3000 was a post, post-apocalyptic, uh, was a battle between the sexes, and um, you know, uh, I think Canon made that movie because they want all the women were re- wearing loincloths, running around in loincloths. <laughs> that was the story, to be honest with you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so yeah, I I, um, I enjoy very much meeting uh, the, the wonderful people that come out and, and support me, and that 
uh, you know, um, there's a lot of crazy people too. You know, sure. a lot of there's some guys that uh, will just come and organize your pictures, and then they'll run away. Or uh, there's people that come up with uh, uh, naked pictures of porn stars. <laughs> uh, recently, actually, when I was in uh, uh, Ohio. Uh, Strongsville, Ohio, uh, a guy came up and uh, there was a porn star there. I, I didn't know who she was at all, but he, he left the picture on my table where I was sitting and I didn't see the picture and then he, and he said, do you, do you have any naked pictures of yourself? I want some naked pictures. The, the, you know, you got your clothes on and all these. Uh, don't you have something underneath, on, under the table, uh, naked? And, <laughs> and then I saw the picture uh, on the table and I screamed because there was this you know, naked picture of a woman with her her ankles behind her ears, showing her little girl, so to speak. Yeah. And, and and you know, I you know, there's just some crazy people, or, or some people. Just uh, one guy last show just ran up and screamed, "Lorraine Landon! Oh my God!" And then he ran away, and I never saw him again. <laughs> um, but you know, the, you know, the, the, well, the people that come to these shows are hardcore fans of uh, certain movies and it's really delightful and amazing to me that that um, they uh, revel and relish uh, certain movies and uh, the last show I went to I took my uh, dear friend uh, Larry Cohen who I write with um, and you know he's, he's an icon in this industry uh, he wrote Phone Booth and Cellular well I wrote the treatment he wrote the screenplay and he bestseller in the It's Alive trilogy, and he had lines around the block. The same thing at Chiller Theater when we did Chiller Theater uh-huh. a year, year and a half ago. And he had he had lines around the block just just to come and meet him and talk to him and huh. uh, take pictures with him. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Have you heard of Larry I, Cohen? I, I have I have heard of him. And if, it, if, it, if this is the phone booth with uh, Colin Farrell, I remember that movie. <laughs> Yeah, Colin Carroll. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that before. Yeah, and Kiefer Sutherland uh, was the voice. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that was uh, a freaky movie. Yeah. And Katie Holmes was in it, too, and uh, there were a lot of big stars, and it was number one at the box office. I suppose, um, is, is Larry is Larry uh, an easy person to get a, a hold of, or, or is he... Well, I suppose since you guys ride together and stuff, I suppose it's easy for you to get a hold of him. You probably have his I number. I talk to him all the time. I talk to him all the time. Yeah. We have a comic book coming out, as a matter of fact. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, we wrote a comic book together. I created the comic book, and we wrote the uh, uh, the comic book together. Ron Randell is uh, a very, very famous um, artist uh, uh, and who does graphic novels. and. Huh. Uh, the comic book's coming out very soon. Uh, Larry does not want me to say the name of it because yeah. I'm afraid somebody's going to pill for the idea. But it, it is an insect, yes. And uh, Abby Arad, who did Spider-Man, uh, we have met with him many times, and he, he's dying to see the comic book. So huh. uh, he to talk about, and we met him to talk about making it a feature film. And so um, you know, when the comic book comes out, we'll see what happens. And I know I'm I'm totally uh, opposed to you know. Uh, that type of franchise, you know, uh, that Iron Man and all of yeah. that stuff. But, but uh, people love comic books, so I came up with this idea about a year and a half ago, two years ago, and um, like I said, the comic book uh, is going to be coming out uh, later on this year sometime. Cool. Um, yeah, I wish I could say the name of it, yeah. but I'm not. It's, it's called The Praying Mantis. <laughs> oh, Praying Mantis. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might have to let Larry know about about me and my little interviews, things that I do. I I think he'd be kind of a cool person to to chat with if I could ever get oh, a hold of him. He would love to. He would love to talk to you. Love to talk to you. you please send me um um uh, an email or ask Joe for his phone number. Okay. He would love to talk to you. Um, I mean, I'm boring compared to him. Larry <laughs> Cohen is the funniest human being I have ever met in my entire life. Cool. You know, he writes uh, a lot of um, the horror, well, only a couple of the horror genre, but he, he does thrillers, you know. He's yeah. a huge fan of, uh, of oh, what was his name? I can't think, his name escapes me right now. The greatest director, uh, thriller director of all time. Um, Vis- Vincent Price? But no, that'd probably be an actor for Vincent Price. That's an actor. Yeah. No, I can't think of his name that escapes me. But anyway, yeah. um, if you get a hold of Joe, uh, I know Larry. Larry's in New York on business, and he's coming back. He's been there for, I think, uh, two weeks. But we talk every single day. Okay. Uh, his, wife, his wife is a very, very dear friend of mine, Cynthia. Okay. 
He would love to be interviewed on your show. I'm sure he would. Okay, well, hey, you know, I appreciate that, and uh, well, I'll, I'll definitely get a hold of Joe, and I'll see what we can do. Because if Joe's okay. a, if Joe's the guy with the answers, well, <laughs> he knows everybody. <laughs> yes, sir, he does. Well, He's hey, an incredible human being too. I appreciate uh, this this uh, chat that we've had, and uh, uh, I'll definitely let you know when it goes up. So if you do want to listen to it uh, when we do the live, it should be before the end of end of May, more or less, because I've, I've been booked with other people that I've been chatting with, too, so, but uh, I'll let you know when this goes up. Alright, thank you so much for taking the time to yeah. have me on the show. Thank you so much for thinking of me, and mm-hmm. you have reached a disconnected numbskull. What can, what can I tell you? <laughs> Alright, well, hey, I appreciate it, Lorraine. You take thank care. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank Bye. you. Have a lovely and that was Laureen Landon, and uh, man, she definitely has the gift of gab, but it, she definitely was uh, somebody fun to talk to, and I just want to say thanks, th- say thanks to my agent Joe for hooking us up, and uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see what else we can do. Larry Cohen, I've heard, I've heard of him before, and uh, if you guys remember the movie Phone Booth, man, well, we'll have to wait and see, see what happens, but uh, anyway, I want to say thanks to Laureen, and uh, we'll see, we'll... Be right back after a quick commercial break with more of Frankie and the old Rev here on the Frankie Slauson Show on KTech. <laughs> 